So a first time fill rate is the proportion of line items in all orders shipped complete and on time, right? So line items, right? This is you just like count the number of line items and you measure, you know, how many line items you shipped complete, right? How many lines? So first time fill rate line items is number of line items shipped perfect versus total of number of total number of line items during a particular period, right? A month or a week, what have you, whenever you measure it, right? So quantity doesn't matter. The lines matter, right? So if you are doing a good job of forecasting, good job of keeping in the inventory, right, then obviously, you know, you you are really looking at how you are able to serve your customer, regardless of whether a small quantity was ordered, a large quantity was ordered, it doesn't matter. The paradigm is still the same. You have the right forecast and you produce the inventory to the forecast plus the error margin, then you should have the inventory to satisfy a small order or a large order, regardless of what type of order it is, right? So there is a question actually on in terms of the waiting, and we'll talk about it too. We can also weight the customer service metric by either quantity, the eaches, or also by the 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 price, right? By dollars, right? How much it is ordered, right? We can do that as well, where you make a distinction saying, okay, well, if it is a high value item, I want to make sure that my customer service is higher on the high value items versus the low value items, right? You are making specific distinctions here, and you can do that as well, and you can weight your customer service that way, right? You can also do that, um, you know, using the the weighting factor. So that's that's a good point and, and a good question. Okay, um, so here in the line items, right, you know, I basically recommend the line items because it is a much more rigorous, tougher measure than weighting it, right? So it does not depend on quantity or value ordered, right? And treats all items the same, right? It's a tougher measure. So if you have a good forecast and a good inventory policy, then you should be able to accomplish a line item level fill rate, right? So, um, okay, so so that's kind of like, you know, we'll, so we'll show an example of how this is being measured, right? So proportion, on the other hand, if you just lo look at the weighted number, right, the unit number, there's a proportion of line items in all orders shipped perfect weighted by units ordered, right? So you just still take the line items, but then weighted by the number of units for that particular line item, right? And the total number of units ordered is the denominator. So now this is you're weighting it by units, okay? So the key is you are still looking at the number of line items shipped perfect, so which means if there is a line item and you are able to ship that item completely, ship that line completely, and weighted by the units requested, right, that's what you are reporting as the fill rate, right? This is not the same as a calculation that says number of units shipped, right? Number of units shipped versus number of units totally demanded, right? Total number of units demanded. Now, this is a very inaccurate way of measuring customer service. And, and uh, you know, it, it, would, it would be mind-boggling as a student of the theory here, but I have seen in practice in consulting clients, you know, a, a number of consulting clients that actually kind of deceive themselves by using a measure such as this. And obviously, if they present this measure to their retail customer, they'll probably throw you out the window, right? And as long as you do a good window dressing and as long as you do a good job kind of, uh, you know, dancing around it, right, and as long as the retail customer doesn't understand, the buyer doesn't understand what this metric is, then all is, all is safe. But if they look through this measure, then they won't like it because this is almost like saying, you know, um, we had total demand for 80,000 units and then we have shipped about 60,000 units or 75,000 units. And that is our customer service metric because it does not consider whether a specific order was was kind of like shipped correctly or not, right? So you may have orders that was look, looking for 100 units and you actually shipped 95 units. To me, that is actually zero customer service, right? Because that line item was actually not shipped. That line item would be zero, you know, regardless of what the weight is, right? Even if the weight is, say, 95%. The line item was zero, so that should be a hit against your supply chain. That should not count towards your customer service. So, so beware of this, of how it's being measured. If your measure is number of units divided by total number of units for that particular order, that's not a good measure, right? So the measure should be rigorous in terms of using the lines first, then weighting by the, the units. 
right? Weight the fill rate by units ordered. Service issues on small and critical products will be obscured by this metric. So if a customer needs a small or a critical component and they are, they are just ordering one or two units in the particular line item and it's a critical component for their assembly or for their uh, OEM customer, then you know you miss that, right? You are not able to deliver it. But if you are weighting your service metric by units, obviously you are going to obscure such type of criticality of the product. All right. So can also be weighted by dollars, and that was a question raised by one of the uh, the participants today. Okay. So so let me just put an example out here for you, right? The the first time fill rate um, example or the fill rate per se, right? is basically, um, you know, let's say there is, you have a, you have five SKUs here, and, and this particular order has, in for SKU A, has 100 units ordered, 200, 10,000, 2,900. Now shipped on time, right, customer requested date, right, you shipped on time, uh, which is like the first time shipment, right, which is like, which is what has to meet the customer's request date, and that's why we call it first time. You know, we can also say it's actually customer requested date, right? Fill rate per customer requested date, right? So, um, you know, you are able to ship line line item line one for SKU A, hundred. You were able to meet that particular line item. SKU B, you were able to ship in fulfillment two hundred, right? And SKU X also, you were able to do it, right? So that's pretty good. SKU Y, you have a problem. You have a shortage in your warehouse, so you are only able to ship 200 before the customer requested date, right? The first time shipment, which meets the customer's requested date, right? The first time shipment was 200 when they requested 2,000, right? SKU Z, you, have, you don't have a problem. You have inventory to meet it, so yours was 900, right? You also ship 900 there. In the second shipment, QY, which didn't meet the customer requested delivery date. It did not meet the delivery date, right? The delivery date was missed, right? You shipped in a subsequent shipment, but you shipped 500 in the second shipment, right? Uh, but you could never meet this 2,000, right? And the customer canceled the rest, right? So they basically said the, the rest of the 1,300 is, is canceled, right? They're going to buy somewhere else. So if you're looking at the first time fill rate by line item level, right? then what you have is they have ordered four lines out of which you shipped five, you know, uh, they have ordered five lines, I'm sorry. You have shipped four lines completely. You have fulfilled four lines. So the first time fill rate just as a line item is 80%. So that's your customer service if you're using first time fill rate line items. Now, first time fill rate units, you want to weight each fulfilled line by the quantity that you shipped, right? So obviously, you know, you shipped the entire quantity, only then you would have a fulfillment here, which is a one or a zero here. So it's zero in here, right? So you weighted by that. So what you have is the weighted number is 11,200, right? Weighted by the quantity. So weighted by the quantity is 11,200. Total ordered is 13,200. So if you combine the two, 11,200 divided by 13,200 results in 85%. Right? 85% is your first time fill rate in units. Okay. Now, on the other hand, um, you know, your um, if you are measuring as a first to ship fill rate on a line item basis, saying you know your own metric, which is kind of a weaker metric, is as long as I deliver at least one unit on my shipment, right, just one unit in the first shipment that meets the customer's requested delivery date. You know, I've used, I've seen some of the customers use this as well. Some of the clients use this as well, right? Of course, erroneously, it's self-serving, right? Then you say, you know, as long as I deliver one before the customer requested delivery date, in this case, I'm going to think of all of these lines as being fulfilled, then my customer service metric is 100%. You know, obviously, some of you will laugh at this, right? Because they miserably failed on SKUY, but since they shipped something in partial fulfillment, they think of this actually as better than not shipping anything, right? So that's, you know, then you would measure it as 100%. Now, if you actually measure the other way around, which is to say, 
you know, which I have seen kind of a prevalent and common in a, in, a, in a few customers, you know, which is also kind of not a good metric is total items shipped versus total items ordered. So which is then you would measure the 11,400 or the 11,900, right? Then you would measure 11,900 is the total shipment versus 13,200, right? Regardless of when you shipped or if you shipped complete in fulfillment or not. And that is also I observed as a a, you know, a a fill rate for units. And I have seen a number of major companies still using this, you know, even when after our recommendation that not to use this, they have used this type of a measure, which simply takes the number of ship you know, number of items shipped versus number of items ordered, regardless of whether they met the customer's requested delivery date or not, right? So even if it is a partial shipment, right, you know, which should be a considered a hit, and people have used uh, such a measure, right? So, um, you know, the most rigorous measure is really the first time fill rate, you know, line item level is a very, very rigorous measure, and it really, you know, gives you a, a measure of true supply chain performance. 